Hey, welcome to this channel. Today we will be studying colors and composition from John Wick films. You know, John Wick, he lost his dog and went on a killing spree. It wasn't just the dog, that John Wick. But the film itself is brilliant, visually pleasing. We'll study all the colors and composition from that film. Oh my god, this is not how Keanu speaks. Come on, listen to me. Shut up, I'm trying to work here. No, you shut up. I need guns. Lots and lots of guns. Look man, it's just a freaking YouTube tutorial. Stop being so overdramatic. It's not just a tutorial. Just listen. We'll take screenshots from the film, take it to Photoshop, and then we'll study what makes this film brilliant. Without wasting any more time, let's get right into it. Oh my god. I'll just go change into something decent and get rid of all this stupid face paint. Alright, see you in a bit. Okay, alright, I know the intro was a little extreme, but it was necessary to bring you to this point where I actually talk about how you can study composition and color from films. I captured some screenshots from John Wick for this purpose. First, let's study those compositions and colors and then in the end I'll paint some of the screenshots. So let's do this. So here's the first screenshot, John Wick running along with his dog. Now to understand its composition, we need to break it into simple positive and negative spaces. We'll refer to all the darks in the image as positive space and all the lighter areas to negative space. If you break the image down to simple blacks and whites, you can now understand and read the image better. You can see how the dark figure is placed against the lighter background so that it reads better even when it's simplified into only two tones. This is really important when you are painting and you want your character or your main subject to read better in a visual. Maybe try not using a dark subject against a dark background the next time that you paint. And also, don't put a very light subject against a very light background, but use positive and negative spaces instead. Put lighter subjects against darker background and a darker subject against a relatively lighter background. Let's have a look at some more examples here. Dark silhouettes, perfect against the lighter background. Even in this one, here's the positive space, here's the negative space. This is one of the reasons why filmmakers use fog machines to create a lot of hazy and foggy environments while shooting. First, because the main subject is more visible against the lighter background and secondly, it doesn't draw the eye to all the unnecessary details in the shot. For example, I didn't even notice that there is a cannon placed in the room. Because the last thing you want to say while John Wick is running for his life in the film is, oh hey look, there's a cannon. No. The filmmaker wants you to stay focused on your main subject here. All of the other stuff, it's secondary. You must have noticed that in films, the main subjects are often placed at the sides of the screen, especially when two people are having a conversation in an over-the-shoulder shot. That's because of something called the rule of thirds. So the rule of thirds is basically when you divide your shot or canvas into two equally distant horizontal and vertical lines. You get these points of intersection and that's where your main subject goes. It basically makes the composition more interesting. But that doesn't mean you can compose your main subject in the center of the frame because you certainly can. It all depends on what story you want to tell in your compositions and what feeling you want to convey to the viewer. But this rule of thirds, it's quite handy while painting your compositions. Next time, when you have no idea where to put your main subject, maybe try one of these four points. There's one more thing that I want to add here. It's that you don't have to put your subject exactly on these intersection points. It can be a little off to the right or the left from those points too, like in these frames. Now this one's really interesting. In this one, John is about to finish off this bad guy right here. To be honest, in these films, I don't know who's the bad guy and who's the good one, but that's not the point. Let's assume that he's the bad guy and John Wick is approaching him. First of all, there is a lot of vertical lines going on in this shot. This creates a sense of alertness in the viewers. Another thing to notice here is that we are viewing this almost at the level of this guy right here. So it's a low angle shot. A low angle is mostly used when you want to show a character dominating. 
powerful and intimidating. In this case, it's our favorite emo boy killer guy John Wick. For example, here's another low angle shot of him about to finish off another bad guy. The opposite of this would be a higher angle shot, which is mostly used to show when the character is insecure, like in this scene where John is wounded and running for his life. These things really help convey the story better and can affect viewers emotionally. In this one, let's discuss how filmmakers use simple tricks to guide the viewer's eye to where they want to lead it to. As artists, we can also use these tricks to convey a story or to guide the viewer's eye to our main subject. The first method is to use the simple guiding lines in your image to lead the eye. In this case, it's these lines. They are all pointing towards the character here, even the lines on the floor. This really helps converse the viewer's attention here in the center. Another example would be this shot. See, all of the lines converging here at the character. To prevent the viewer's attention from going out of the canvas, there's another trick that filmmakers and artists use which is to darken the edges of the shot like in this one and even in this one when you look at it with half eyes closed you can clearly see how bright the center is and how dark the edges are another way to make the viewers look at a certain direction is to make the characters in the scene look in that particular direction we as viewers tend to look where we see the others looking because we suspect there must be a point of interest there just like in this shot let's discuss one more way to lead the viewers attention to the main subject it's through high contrast like in this shot see how this guy is contrasting with everything else in the scene and in this one see how Winston's face has bright orange colored light on it which is totally contrasting with the dark and teal colored environment and in this last photo where that strong yellow light on John's face is really contrasting with the relatively darker green and red background notice how that green and red background is used quite frequently in this films like in these scenes. See how green and red lights are used to light up the scenes? That is related to color harmonies. As you can see, the reds and the greens are located at the opposite ends of the color wheel, so they can be used as a color scheme, and that color scheme is known as complementary color scheme. So the colors that are on the opposite ends of the color wheel complement each other, just like this blue and yellow colors here, which is also used in the film. Let's cover one more way to color your scenes before I jump into painting some of the screenshots. Let's look at this scene right here. Now if I select the eyedropper tool and select any color from this image, it's going to be green. So there are lighter and darker tones of the same color, which is known as monochromatic color harmony. It's just a fancy way of saying one color. It could be any color. So if I change the hue of this image, I can change it to all blue or all purple or anything else. Here are some of the examples of monochromatic color schemes from John Wick films. Okay, we have learned a bunch of stuff from the films. Now if you don't paint some of these yourself, you'll forget everything that I just mentioned before. So the best way to learn these compositions and colors is to do little painting studies and sketches using screenshots from films as reference. When you do a bunch of these studies, it builds your visual vocabulary so whenever you have to create a scene using your imagination you can visualize it compose it nicely and you know what colors work best and where the lights and darks go it all becomes second nature after you practice a lot you can also turn these screenshots into grayscale if you want to practice values and compositions and the fun part is that these are something that you can generate quickly these studies don't have to be extremely accurate and they don't have to be finished paintings the idea is to spend little time on each one of these so you can paint a bunch of them. Let's say you want to be good at oil painting. There are two ways you could think of practicing. One is that you go to the art store, get a big sized canvas, come home, use a photograph as reference and start painting. That big painting might take several days to complete. So let's say it took you 10 days to complete that painting. Another way would be that you go to the art store and get 10 small sized canvases to work on. You can work on a new painting every day for the next 10 days. Every single day you learn something new and improve and your 10th painting will be better than your first one. So the point is that practice is important, we all know that, but effective learning is something far more important. See how I'm just loosely painting stuff. I'm not worrying about how the little details look, because my main goal here is to focus on simplifying the compositions and do quick studies, and not get lost in the details. It's usually a good idea to set the time for each study. For example, you can spend 10 to 15 minutes on each 
each one of these. It's important because we sometimes can get really carried away working on faces and small detailed stuff in the painting. It's important to learn mark making. So for little areas where the light hits or a shape that makes shadow, paint it with a mark and impression instead of accurately painting the whole damn thing. By the way, there are different ways you can capture film screenshots to study from. You can visit websites like filmgrab.com to get still pictures from your favorite movies of all time. I'll link that website in the description. Or if you're watching a film on your laptop or PC and using a media player like VLC Media Player, it has a key assigned for taking screenshots while watching the film. So you can use that. All right, that's it. This was the last one, I guess. I painted one more, but I forgot to hit record, so yeah, that happened. Hope you'll learn something from this video. So let's go back to John Wick and see what he has to say. Mr. Wick? Mr. Wick? Jonathan? How do I finish this? Thanks for watching. You are breathtaking. You all are breathtaking. There is one more thing that I'd like to add here. Please leave a comment down below. And if you want to see more of this art and design and this insanity, please consider subscribing. Thank you and see you. Bye.